On his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Chapter 11, you're getting it. The Word of God. Just as John began to proclaim over there, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He went on down a few verses and he said in that same chapter that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I'm thankful that it came right into my life one night in an old fashioned service just like this. As I began to hear the gospel message begin to sound out, that horse and his rider, I'm not waiting for him to come out there in the future. If you're waiting for him, you're badly mistaken. I'm glad that he came riding, trampling, galloping into my life when I was unsaved. I'm glad that as he began to allow that word to begin to go out. We all know Apostle Paul began to say in another place when he began to speak of it. Hebrews began to write in the first chapter there how that there was an importance in the way things are doing now as, as, as compared or as opposed to the way they were back under the law. And he said, God who at that sundry time and in divers manners Spake in time past unto the fathers, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, Jesus Christ. The Word, the one that's faithful and true, the only faithful and true witness that we've got here on this earth. And I'm thankful that it began to storm into my life at one point when I was lost and tore me all to pieces, and it'll do the next person the same way too. Thinking about God and how that He had. That plan, we spoke about it the other night. I just can't get away from it until you right? plan we spoke of that John saw in this same book that we read here, and he had his book written and his plan of salvation. There was a need for it to be executed. A need for it to be fulfilled here in this life. The plan of salvation, meaning the gospel message of good news needed to come so that we might be able to be saved and dodge hell when this life is over. That Jesus would come, preach His gospel, do the work that He done upon the cross of Calvary, was slain there for our sins, and began to go through the misery of that horrible crucifixion that we, through what He was doing there, might begin to gain life through His death because He got up on the third day victorious over. As He was, was going there and had that plan, there was a need for it to be executed. God began to let John see that the one that was able to open it up was Jesus, that man that he turned around to see when he was looking for that lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he saw a lamb as if it had been slain when he turned around to look. Then when he started to open it, I want you to listen real close, and I'm not, hope I don't get in so deep that you can't follow along with the importance of this word right here. That's not what I'm trying to do tonight. I want you to understand how important it is for you to allow this gospel to come into your life, to do the work it was ordained to do a long time ago. We know, as he said in the scripture, that he stood as a lamb slain from before the foundation of this world. And that if you allow what he said in order in, in your life and in my life and anyone else that wants it, that you can have life. But... You need to know as we preach one night this week about that enemy that every one of us have. As soon as we start doing what God wants us to do, we're going to have problems. He's going to be right there trying his best to steal from us the joy that we have down on the inside. He's going to be right there. Did you hear what Brother Tommy said the other night? As soon as he stepped out and made the move toward God and began to follow through with baptism, the very words that came to his mind going up the road was what has he done? Has he made a mistake? Am I doing the right thing? Can I do this? Those things will go in your mind. That's how Satan works. He's a deceiver. He's a liar, the Scripture says, and the father of it. He's going to try his best to sway you away from doing what his plan is here upon this earth. So as his plan began to be executed, 
As soon as that book was open, he saw something. And you got to keep in mind, this is a vision. This isn't something that literally happened. But in this vision, we're going to be able to see something happen real good. Over a few more chapters, he talks about, about the same thing in this book, in the sixth chapter of Revelation, and he says this. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. We know the Lamb is too, don't we now? I hope you do. That's Jesus. And I heard, John said, as it were, the noise of thunder. We can read a lot about that in here. One of the brethren mentioned about when John was there and he began to see the brethren go up on the hill there. When John baptized Jesus there in the river, when he was hanging on the cross, the Bible says that it sounded as if it thundered. God's Word began to go out. <clears throat> as it were, the noise of thunder, something started moving. Just like in the very beginning when God began to speak in the book of Genesis. This world was without form. It was void, shapeless, no life in it. The Bible said that the Spirit of God began to move upon the face of the deep. Then what happened? As that spirit began to move, the word began to speak out, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. Same thing happened in my life. I was dark, void, lifeless. The spirit of God through that word began to come into my life and speak to me, the same word, and it began to speak salvation to me if I would just obey and do what he's told me to do, believe down on the inside. That gospel message has got power in it. There's, there's something about it that we can't fully comprehend in these natural minds of ours, but it, when it begins to go out in the power that God has ordained it to do, there's not enough powers in this world. There's not enough demons in hell to stop what God has ordained to go on in your shop right here. I need to go on here. One of the four of these saying, come and see, he's about to see something. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, just like one we saw over there. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. I'm so thankful as we began to look, just as we mentioned the other night in this same book right here, we began to see Jesus moving upon the scene there. As we spoke about that deceiver, the old adversary, slew foot, trying his best to hinder the working of the church, to hinder the working of God's plan coming into fruition here upon this earth, tried to hinder Christ when he was born, tried to hinder him as he walked here, tried to uh, do away with him, thought he won. After that, he got up victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Then he started going after it. Uh, all the children that began to be born of what he uh, came for us to be born in in the church. He's trying his best now to get them. Uh, but bless God, we're seeing the same thing go forth right here. Uh, this chapter right here. You can't read this as a chapter book, one right after another. Uh, this is visions and signs. And as he went on here, we see that as that horse began to go out, uh, let's just call it the gospel message here tonight. Uh, let's just say that when this gospel down through this week has been preached, uh, that horse has been galloping all around this building right here uh, every night this week. Uh, and he's wanting to find a, a lodging place in men and women's hearts here upon this earth. I uh, guess even uh, born again people's hearts, they need to still uh, have room down on the inside uh, for that to come down on the inside and not be blackened up. I was sin because if there's sin down on the inside, I, the Bible teaches you and I just as they sang the song last night, I, that this body right here, this heart, I, is where that he wants to dwell, that he doesn't dwell anymore I, in temples made with hands. He doesn't dwell I, in this building that we call the Echo Church building, I, but he dwells in the Echo Church people I, that's here upon this earth and wants to abide down on the inside. I, but if there's trash, if there's sin, if there's blackness, uh, he's not going to dwell there. He needs to have a clean vessel. Uh, and my friend, you cannot clean that up on your own. Uh, you need to allow the power of God, that word that he spoke of and said that he was. Uh, the writer began to say in another place, the washing uh, of water by the word uh, can clean you up uh, and make you a fit subject uh, to go to heaven when this life is over. So as that horse and his rider Jesus Christ began to go out into this world a long, long time ago, 
uh, through the voice of uh, him walking here upon this earth. And then he began to tell those brethren uh, that were there with him as he was getting ready to leave them. He told them now, uh, you take my gospel, you go uh, into all nations uh, and preach my gospel uh, to every creature. Uh, what is that gospel? Remind again, uh, that's the good news from a far country. What is the good news? Uh, that a Savior has come. Uh, that a Messiah is here. Uh, that He's brought salvation uh, within our reach that we can be saved uh, when this life is over. That's as simple uh, as we know how to put it. Go into all the world. Uh, he told those brethren and preached my gospel. Uh, in every nation, he that believeth. Believeth what? Believeth the gospel. Uh, the gospel message that Christ uh, was born and rose up. Uh, died upon the cross of Calvary was buried on the third day he got up again. I bless God in that. He's ascended to the Father and he's there on the right side of the Father making intercession for you and I that we have a right that we have a privilege that we can go to the Father through and by Jesus Christ our mediator our interceder the one that's there for our propitiation for our sin that if we'll go through him uh, we can have salvation and uh, no other name given among men uh, whereby we can be saved other than uh, the name of Jesus how glad we ought to be of what he's done for us tonight uh, uh, that that's come out uh, and it can gallop right into your heart right here this evening church uh, uh, you ought to keep that path open for him to come in uh, and dwell down on the inside like he told Zacchaeus there uh, uh, this day I must abide at your house. Uh, is he living down on the inside? Uh, has he taken up his abode down on the inside? Uh, if he's not, why isn't he? Uh, have you opened up your heart's door and invited him to come in? Uh, he's not going to tear the door down. Uh, he's not going to try to drag you in uh, or bust his way into your life. Uh, but oh, when that sweet, uh, small, still voice uh, begins to speak in your life, now that's that horse of traveling right on in. And when he came upon his journey here in this life, they said that he had a bow with him. And you know one of the very first things that they shot when they went to battle back in the old days of Bible time. The very first shot fired was from those bows. They'd shoot them and get them afar off out there before they got right face to face with them. That they might be able to meet their enemy and slow their enemy down. I bless God, he was the one that started every bit of this. I will say, well, I thought the old devil was right there from the beginning. Hey, Christ, I was the one right from the get-go with his father that saw fit to say that there was a need of a Savior because he knew what Adam was going to do before he ever done it. And he knew what old Satan was going to try to do with Adam see after him. So he had his playbook climbed out. And praise God, he knew exactly the move to make to be on the winning side because as he went forth into this world, he didn't come to play games. He didn't come to tickle the ears. And he's even told us in his word to not do that either. He came meaning business. And when he came meaning business here in this world, he began to tear houses upside down with the message of his gospel. He began to tear lives down on the inside, ripped them apart. Why? Because this new doctrine that they began to hear that we're so used to on every Sunday. Every time we gather, we hear the preaching of the cross. That there's a power in that. That when that horse begins to go out, as the Apostle Paul said one time, knowing that he wasn't going to die until he preached the gospel in Rome, he said, I'm now ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, for therein in the gospel uh, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith uh, 
as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I show them when that began to move upon the scene, we now have the hope that down on the inside of these earthly vessels that we can become a child of God, that he has started the battle, and bless his name, we find that he's victorious, and that he went forth conquering and to conquer, and what did he conquer? That he went forth conquering something for your benefit and mine, because when he got up that third day, he defeated, he became victorious, over death hell on the grave. We even find as he was here, they said all power has been given unto him, both in heaven and on earth, that he has been given authority, and bless God, and that old slew put his had authority taken away from him, and the only authority that he's got today in anybody's life, that is as much as you'll allow him to have, that he cannot rule in your life, if you're not willing to allow him to do the ruling. And as he began to come upon the scene, and that's exactly what he brought. Because as we said a while ago, as soon as we get on board with our Savior, bless his name, I picture him. Because in that same chapter that we read there a minute ago, he began to talk about his bride a little bit. How do you know who the bride is? I'm looking at the bride right here tonight. I'm looking at the Lamb's wife. I'm the one that's been down the last flowing fountain. And praise God when he came into this world, he began to get her right on board with him. And she's right there with him traveling right along and he's protecting her. And he has taken her to a pavilion, to his shelter, to a hiding place, to a place of protection here upon this earth, and that if we'll abide where he's told us to abide, we won't have to worry about what the old devil has for us. I praise God, he'll try his best to pull us down, but we know that he's on the winning side. And what did this brother tell us last night about that faith? And that that is what allows us to gain the victory. What gives us the victory to overcome this world? Even our faith. Where do we get that faith? Let's go back to the Word of God and see what he said. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How can you hear without a preacher and how can they preach except they be sin? Bless God, he's brought a plan into action and that's working tonight in full working order and it's not going to be much longer until the rest of that plan begins to play out when he's going to say to his children, come on home. So then, let me move on here for just a minute. You all bear with me. He went out to fight. A victory has been given unto him. He's going to win the warfare. Praise God and we the church. We're on the winning side. Not all going to be out there in the future with some battle. But bless God right now. You better be fighting today. Because listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against the powers that be upon this earth. But what do we fight again? Prince of pounds and powers. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise God, we're fighting the good fight. That's why he's told you and I to put upon us the whole armor of God. And my sinner friend, if you're here tonight, I'm not saying this to discourage you. That there's a big warfare that's coming our way. But praise God, I read that those that began to receive that word, that they became afflicted. But then right in the same verse as they being afflicted, it said with joy they began to press right on. Praise God, right in our tribulation, we can rejoice. Right in sorrow, we can praise God, because we know we're on the winning side. Bless His name forever. The victory is ours, and we can fight 
with him because he's already blazed the trail before us and he's already before us now then and we already told you that he's come on and if you begin to come in the church as soon as you get on board with that white horse you're going to have problems listen what's going to happen and when he had opened the second seal in verse 3 I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. Now, oh, listen, as soon as you get on board with that white horse and you follow after it, and you allow it to be in your life of Jesus Christ coming in, and praise God, there's going to be something that's going to follow right after it. And it's the old slew foot, the old devil. And he's going to be right there. What's he going to do? But praise God, it said, and power was given to him that sat there on. He won't have a bit of power other than what he is given here upon this earth. And oh, listen, just like Job was back there. Have you considered my servant Job? Have you the heads about him? And oh, listen, as he began to start poking and gouging at him, that Job held right on to his integrity. How old Satan took everything that he had from his riches to his family and to his health and his home. But bless God, he still looked right unto God. And he praised him and he said, The Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That praise his name and they that should kill one another and was given unto him a great sword. Now, where did he get that power? That was to say he got it from Christ. Now, he allowed him to have that. Now, so then, if we'll stay with Christ, now, we already know that he's won the victory. Now, we already know that he's fought the fight for us. Now, when you just said we got to fight, we most certainly do, and we better get the whole armor upon us. And you can come to him and He'll give you exactly what you need yeah. to be yeah. victorious. The whole armor of God, and the helmet of salvation, and the breastplate of righteousness, and that shield of faith, that girt about the loins with the truth. Bless His name, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because why Satan is constantly throwing those fiery darts at you, that trying his best to pull you down. But don't forget we're on the winning side. We're victorious. And we can overcome him. We can on our own. But if we'll turn to God and allow him to fight the fight for us by leaning upon him, bless God we'll come out victorious because he's given us that sword and that he's provided for us that word. And that he said in another vision that he saw coming out of his mouth. And that was a sharp two-edged sword as another writer. I began to say the word of God. That is sharp and powerful. A sharp remaining two-edged sword. A piercing the body the son of the soul and the spirit. Have a joint in the mar and it is a discerner. Out of the thoughts and the intent of our heart. It'll get down where you live at. It'll be to come into your life and if you will allow it to we used to hear a song sung about a secret room and you may have a room down on the inside of your life and that you've kept locked up from everybody around the secrets in there and that nobody but you and the Lord know about but if you will allow him to come in he'll clean every bit of that up he'll make you whole He'll make you a child of the Most High God and cast your sins as far as and be as from the west. I praise God tonight. I'm thankful and that He's came to conquer and He's conquering still yet today. As I said, I am He that was alive and was dead and then behold, I'm alive forevermore. I'm He that was and is and is to come. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the ending. He's my all and all tonight. And if we'll trust
trusting him. When the old devil comes our way, trying his best to destroy us, we can gain the victory. Because, listen, if we don't stay with Christ, listen what's going to happen. Even when Satan comes in, that's not the worst of it. When he comes into your life, as opposed to that white horse, how you know what's going to happen? I read about that next horse that comes along. It's a black one. And he's going to bring problems. He's going to bring famines. He's going to bring distress. He's going to bring misery in your life and in the sin of this world. It'll bring sadness and depression and misery. But bless God, the goodness of God that leadeth men to repentance. Now, if we get him on the inside with that white horse, now, there's nothing any better than that. Now, because, as we said, he's our all in all, and it's just better farther on with him. As so as he begins to come in, old Satan, and try to bring us down as his enemy, and then he begins to bring pestilence and famine in the lives of sinners. Now, oh, bless God, but he let them know, now, hey, don't hurt the oil and wine, are referring to the riches, and who's the rich ones here in this life, hey, we may gain a prestige and honor, I gain the biggest bank account in this world and the best job that we may have, but they can die and leave this world just like they came in, and they can we into this world and they can we're going to leave it, that's so bless God, it's not, oh, what's in the water in the bank account of Roger, What's down on the inside? Well, you may not have two pennies to rub together, and you're the richest individual that there is. For he said, Lay up for yourselves, strangers on this earth, where moth nor rust doth corrupt, and our thieves break through and steal, but rather, and heaven where none of that can occur. I praise God, so if we I will trust in God, we won't have to worry spiritually about all that pestilence coming into our life. Yeah, we may lose everything we got. We may lose everything naturally that we have. But praise God spiritually down on the inside. Satan can't harm that. Oh, but those on the outside, when they begin to lose the riches, what are they trying to do? What were we trying to do? Trying to find satisfaction in the world. Trying to fill that void. Whether it's alcohol. Whether it's drugs. Whether it's sex. Whether it's the riches of life. Prestige, honor, and glory. None of that will ever satisfy. And you'll still have that void. And you'll still not have the business of God there that that hole that you have. I will allow to fit right in there. That's the blessed are those that are in the church. And the oil and the wine aren't going to have to worry about that. Because they're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise that He's provided for us here upon this earth. As long as we live obedient unto His Word, I praise His name. But then, that wasn't all of it either. And there was another horse began to ride through. And He was a pale horse. And it said as He began to come through, and he had a name too. Death and hell was his name. And praise God. And that one was held over people's heads for years under the old law. But when Christ came on the scene, when Christ came galloping through, he took away the sin of death. And that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Sure, we're going to die naturally. But praise God, we can say, even so come Lord Jesus. And as he went on down through here and began to say, and when he opened that and death and hell followed him, and power was given to them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the word, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And my friend, we're not going to have to worry a bit about and death and hell because he said, if we're in Christ, we've already done all the dying that we need to do. And those that leave 
this world I'm prepared. He let us know in his word and that there is a lake of fire prepared for the devil and his angels. We find that its borders have been enlarged. And praise God, there's coming a time and that death and hell are going to give up their dead. And they're going to be cast into a lake of fire. And that's going to be an eternal punishment. And I didn't want to go there. That's why I got on board with that white horse with my Savior and began to travel with him through this life. And you can do the same thing if you want to have it. Praise God. He's made it affordable to all mankind. Oh, come by with that money. He's made it so that anyone that wants it can come and get it. And I'm so thankful today that He has provided it to us that we not have. And it would take money if that was the case. There'd be a lot of us couldn't get it. And if it took some kind of beads or works here on this earth, we'd think we were something if it took that. But it takes believing from the heart. And that form of doctrine that's been delivered through the gospel message. And to get on board, bless God. And that trans- they were singing about and that boat we sing about that praise his name that's going to travel through this world with bumps and bruises all over it and that one day after a while it's going to anchor on heaven's fair shore and I want to be on board and with us and so should the next individual because listen he's coming again and he's coming for one thing and it's those that have had their roads washed as white as snow in the blood of the Lamb. That word has gone out. As he began to speak in the book of Matthew, even in the book of Mark, you let them know that there's a soap, seed sower went forth to sow some more some seed. And he let us know what that seed was. The word, your life, your hearts, that ground that it wants yep. to get planted in. Yep. Yep. Some of you may be a rocky, stony heart. Some may begin to have vines and cares of this world all around you that choke it out. Bless his name when you allow that gospel axe, you allow the plow to come into your life and begin to break it up. As the writer began to say in Jeremiah, that word of God can break up the stony place. Uh, he can break up the rock uh, that it'll begin to lighten into the dark place and allow uh, something to happen there with a the fertile uh, ground. And he even said when he planted it, he wasn't going to leave it alone, but that he dung and he yeah. fertilized it uh, uh, so that it grow, that it prosper. Uh, and if we'll trust in him, he'll take care of it while we're living here and give Amen. us the victory. Amen. Because the old devil's going to try his best to choke it out. We'll look, let God have his way and allow him to yes. work around us to keep the weeds pulled, to allow him to uh, put that precious gospel message to come into our life and keep that ground soft around us. Every now and then we feel we may get a little dry. He'll spread a little water upon us yeah. in that gospel. Uh, when we're getting so wet, we feel like we're getting bogged down. He'll allow the sun to shine in our life, to dry it up a little bit so that we can get a little root down on the inside. He knows what we need to yeah. Yeah. If we'll just trust in Him and yeah. allow Him to guide us. Bless your soul this evening. He loves us. And he wants to take care of us. We'll say this in closing. Here there was a lady one time heard about that word. She, she was there at his feet. And as she was there at his feet, the Bible said, she listened to his word. His sister went right on out there taking care of things in the kitchen, busy taking care of all the things. Hey, you're careful and troubled in many ways. But this one right here at my feet, she's chosen that good part. What she chose, she's chose to sit at his feet Hear the word, that good part that shall never be taken from her. That's the one I want. Amen. I want the one that's able to stick out on the inside. We don't practice sin today and out tomorrow. Go this way and then you're out. I don't preach a steadfastness. We practice a steadfastness here and we're able to stay steadfast if we'll do what he's told us to do. Amen. We're just in today. Don't see you six months. Uh, you can't be steadfast without gathering and having that word continually.
continually working around your roots, allowing that fellowship in the Spirit working at you, you must find a place where you can gather with God's yeah. people, whether it's here, whether it's down the road somewhere, where you can gather around and hear that gospel, hear that rider continually come into your life and begin to take a round around your heart every now and then. And be reminded of where you came from. Yeah. We need that more than anything in this life. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some, even much more as we see the day approaching. Yes. Yes. Yes.